Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Today I want to talk to you about how complicated life seems to have gotten. And just ask a question, was it really ever God's will for life to be so complicated? How many of you can say, no, that's not what God wants? See, nah. How many of you agree life's gotten pretty complicated? You know, everybody's busy, stressed out. Stress is a multi-billion dollar business now, trying to teach people how to, how to be calm. Jesus said in John 10, 10, and let's put it up on the screen. I quote this a lot, but I want you to see it. The thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have and enjoy life, have and enjoy life, have and enjoy life. and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. And I think that I can safely say that if you don't enjoy life on purpose, you probably won't enjoy life. Because Satan has filled the atmosphere with what I call joy suckers. They're out there everywhere. People trying to just drain the joy out of you. If life is complicated, then it's not going to be joyful because complication kills joy. Well, is it really life that's so complicated or is it our approach to life that is so complicated? I well remember when I was murmuring and grumbling and complaining about my schedule. No sane person could do all this. I'm just too busy. Everybody expects too much out of me and blah, blah, blah. And the Holy Spirit just spoke in my heart and said, you made your schedule. If you don't like it, change it. <laughs> so I'm going to say that to all of you today. You're the one that made your schedule and said yes to all the things that you're trying to do. If you want to change something, then change it. You're the only one that can change it. God did not intend for us to go through every day and at the end of it feel like it was a blur and have no idea what we accomplished. But whatever it was, it wasn't what we set out to do that day. I know we all have things like that. So I'm going to talk to you about, I don't know, I think it's seven different things. We'll see. Let me see how many, six, eight. Eight different things today, maybe, hopefully, prayerfully. And the first one that I want to say is that you have to make a decision to change your approach to life. Life may change, but if it does, it's more than likely only going to get worse. The more we come closer to the last days, the worse conditions may be in the earth. I believe God will take care of us. I don't think we have to be afraid. I think these are exciting times and great opportunities for believers to be lights in a dark place. But I do believe that we are going to have to make a decision to change our approach to life. The Bible teaches us that we are not to be conformed to the world. We're not to be like the rest of the world or buy into their system, but we are to be transformed by the entire renewal of our mind. So we need to learn how to think differently. Set your mind that you're going to enjoy your life and set your mind that every time you are doing something, now listen to me, every time you're doing something and it begins to frustrate you, you are going to look for how you can simplify it. Did you hear me? Every time you're doing something and it begins to frustrate you, ask yourself, okay, how can I simplify this? Because as soon as you simplify it, you're going to be able to enjoy what you're doing. My husband is great at this. Dave just sets his mind and doesn't let things upset him. One day last week, he went to play golf, and when he got done, his car wouldn't start. And he was a good ways away from home. And I said, well, what did you do? He said, well, I called the, we got a little thing where you can call, and they'll come out and help you. And he said, I called them, but, you know, it was going to be about an hour before they got there. And 
And, uh, you know, and of course, I would have probably been going, somebody's got to come and get me. I can't just sit here for an hour and say, get in the car, get over and get me. Then it's like, yeah. I said, you know, well, what did you do? He said, well, I just figured if I'm going to be here, I might as well enjoy it. So he said, I got my golf clubs back out and went back up on the green. <laughs> just spent the hour putting golf balls and, you know, practicing this and practicing that. And, you know, we, we have to change. I mean, his car wouldn't start. He was where he was, so he can do one of two things. He can take a simple approach and say, well, this is where I'm at. I'm going to find a way to enjoy it. Or he can make his miserable situation even more miserable by handling it the wrong way. I really don't think much is going to change in our lives until we take some responsibility for the way we behave. We can learn how to have joy in any situation if we'll really make a plan to do it. Nothing about God is complicated. The plan of salvation is so simple that smart people miss it. <laughs> For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him might not perish but have everlasting life. So simple. God loves us. We're sinners. We can't help ourselves. If we ask him to, if we believe in him and trust him and believe he died for our sins, we can be forgiven for all of our sins and he will come and live on the inside of us. Our names will be written in the Lamb's book of life and when our journey here on earth is done, we'll go to heaven to live in his presence for eternity. Who would not want that? But people complicate it. Religion is complicated. Jesus is not complicated. Amen? Prayer is simple. James 4, 2 says, you have not because you ask not. Faith is simple. Trust is simple. I can't do it, but God can. Come as a little child. Letting go of the past makes life simple. Don't drag all your junk from yesterday into today. All it's going to do is be a heavy burden on today. Forgive people that hurt you. Your other option is spend your life hating them and being miserable. But you can just forgive them. That would be the simple thing to do. When you sin and do something wrong, you could feel guilty for two weeks. You could hate yourself and beat yourself up and beat yourself up some more and hate yourself some more and feel guilty some more. Or you could do the simple thing, repent and receive God's forgiveness and go on about your business. Come on now. You can sit here today and you can feel guilty about what you did yesterday or you can say, right now I'm going to receive God's mercy. And I'm not going to keep punishing myself for something that I can't do anything about now except get forgiveness and go on. Jesus said, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. That's simple. You need help? Jesus said, come to me. Make a decision that you're going to change your approach to life. I've changed my approach and how I handle things in my marriage, and it has made my life so much better. I'll give you an example. I wanted Dave to wear these. You saw Mike up here this morning. He has on a white shirt and a vest, and I like that look. Guys are wearing that now, and I think it's a cool look. So I wanted Dave to wear some, some vests, you know? And uh, so he said, yeah, that, that, I, I could do that. So. I took it on myself to have our kids buy him a vest for his birthday, and Mike bought him a vest for his birthday, so now he has two beautiful vests, a black vest and a gray vest. And we, I even helped him pick out a couple of shirts that would go good with his vest. And I said, bring your vest this weekend and wear it on, Tuesday, on Friday morning when, when you're speaking. That's going to really be a, a cool look. I like that look. So he comes out. On Friday morning, he's dressed and he comes out and he's got on the same kind of thing he always wears. And I said, where's your vest? He said, I don't like it. I'm not wearing it. <laughs> okay, so now I, I started to go there. <laughs> How many of you know what I mean? <laughs> but since I've been there many times before and it's not a, not a good trip, didn't enjoy it at all, I quickly, even though I started to go there, I, I started by saying, what do you mean 
you don't like it? Why did we buy them if you don't like them? You mean you're not going to buy them? He said, I don't like the shirt hanging out. I said, well, that's the look. Well, I'm going to tuck mine in. I said, well, then it's going to look old fashioned if you tuck it in. You got to leave it hanging out. And you know, we got to stay cool. And he just said, I don't like it. I'm not wearing it. Well, you know, I spent years and years and years trying to change Dave. And now I've simplified it. At that point, I just said, okay, walked off. The simple thing is, let him wear what he wants to wear. That's what I want to do, so that's what I let him do. Now, you could simplify things in your marriage if you would just stop trying to control everybody. I figure if he don't want to be up to date and in style, that's his business. How many of you think Dave would look good in a vest? Come on. I've also found out if I shut up about it, he'll end up wearing one, so. Okay, I want to tell you a story, and this is a true story. And I had no idea when I was in the midst of this what was going on. So many things we go through, we don't even understand why we're behaving the way we're behaving. And then as we grow in God and He gives us revelation, then we say, oh, that's what I was doing when I was in that situation and made myself so miserable. So I have tended in my life to be able to complicate very simple things. Thank God I've gotten over a lot of that. But I have a tendency to overdo. You know, like if I cook a meal, there's going to be too much of everything. You know, if I like something, I might have it in four colors and, you know, then <laughs> never wear the three odd colors that I thought were so pretty when I got them. <laughs> End up giving them away to somebody. So I'm really trying to learn to simplify, and, and I, I had to do it on purpose. I've actually been working at it for a good number of years, and I was surprised to find when I went out to try to buy books on simplicity that there just wasn't very much at all. And so I wrote one, <laughs> 100 Ways to Simplify Your Life. So if you're looking for help in that area, you can call us and get your copy. But I remember years ago, now this has probably been 35 years ago, before I really was entrenched in the Word of God and was just religious. You know, I had, a, I had a lot of religion before I ever really had relationship with Jesus. And um, so one Sunday after church, I said without thinking, how many of you say things without thinking? <laughs> I said without thinking, hey, why don't you guys, I was talking to like two couples, why don't you guys come over next Sunday after church and we'll throw some burgers and hot dogs on the grill and just sit outside and have some good fellowship and, you know, maybe play a game or something. That, I said, yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Well, that just felt so good. That'd just be so much fun. But of course, then I started thinking it over. And I started thinking, well, if I invite them and I invite them, then they're going to probably be offended if I don't invite them. And so then if I invite them, I better invite them. And then, of course, they've got kids. And so if I don't let their kids come, but if I let their kids come, then their kids have got to come. So my four people within a week turned into about 20. My hot dogs turned into steaks I couldn't afford. Had to make potato salad, and that was an all-day thing. You know, the potato chips wouldn't do. Had to get, get to potato salad now, and it had to be homemade. And then, of course, you know, the yard didn't look right, so we had to plant flowers and <laughs> paint the barbecue pit. And, because now if they're all coming over, of course, I have to impress them and everything has to be just right. So then I spend the whole week cleaning and scrubbing. And by the time the people got there, I didn't even like them anymore. <laughs> I didn't want them there. I couldn't wait until they left. And I was mad at Dave because he went out and played golf on Saturday instead of helping me get ready for this big party we're having on Sunday. Now you're laughing because you get it, don't you? 
All right, let me tell you what I did wrong. First of all, I wanted to impress people with the way my house looked, with my menu. I wanted to impress them. If you live your life trying to impress other people, it is going to be complicated. The only way that you can get rid of complication in your life is to fully be your wonderful self and live to impress God and God alone and not be overly concerned about what people think. I worried about what people would think. That was my second mistake. I did things I could not really afford to do. I couldn't afford the steaks. Dave and I were on a very, very, very tight budget. We had to believe God every month just to pay our bills. And here I am out trying to buy steaks to feed people that I didn't even want to be at my party to start with. <laughs> that I only invited because of what they might think if I didn't invite them. Is anybody where I'm at? I invited too many people to be able to enjoy the party. I invited them for the wrong reasons. I wore myself out by overloading my schedule, doing things I really did not have to do. I blamed Dave for not helping me relieve the pressure that I alone had created. The result was I had a miserable week. The answer was I should have simplified my approach. I should have kept it to, hey, why don't you four come over next Sunday? We'll throw some hot dogs and hamburgers on the grill. I'll make some iced tea and we'll sit outside and have fellowship. That might have been nice. But no, I had to complicate it. So I want to encourage you to start looking at areas of your life. Matter of fact, you should take some time, maybe no later than Monday, have a little meeting with yourself and sit down and just think about your life and how you approach things and, and what is giving you so much stress, what is frustrating you, and ask yourself first, what am I doing that is not bearing any fruit at all in my life that frustrates me all the time that I could just not do anymore? How many things am I doing for wrong reasons? I'm doing them because somebody else thinks I should and I don't even feel like God wants me to do it but I'm doing it just to keep them happy. How many things like that am I doing? And get out your pruning shears and start cutting some things off of your life. And pretty soon you'll have a little bit of sanity in your schedule. Learn how to say no to some things. Be brave. Don't live your life being concerned about what other people are going to think. Live before God and live to make Him happy. And I can tell you that He is not thrilled with our rushing around, being frustrated all the time. And when you're frustrated all the time, then you usually lose your temper and so you end up grouchy with everybody. And you don't understand how anybody can expect you to do all of this stuff that you're doing in your life. God, you just have to do something. I just can't live like this anymore. <laughs> okay, so if you've been crying out to God, we'll just believe that He's speaking through me today and telling you what to do. <laughs> Amen? I've been busier than usual lately. It, it's just been, I've just had a lot going on. I've done three conferences like this in the last six, six weeks and just a lot of things right now. So I've been going a little faster than I should. And when you go faster than you should, you really end up doing some really foolish things, some silly things. So one day, a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, I was getting ready to leave my house. And you know how it is when you're hurrying, you forget this, forget that, you go back and get sunglasses, go back and get, you know, so last thing I did was take the dog outside. She did her business, came in, she got to have her treat. So I got her doggy treat out of the bag and I put it in my mouth instead of hers. I thought, okay, this has got to stop. The next day I meant to throw my underwear in the dirty clothes hamper and I threw them in the trash can. <laughs> then one day last week, I got out to the car. I had my purse on one arm. I was dressed, thank God, and I had my pajamas hanging on the other arm. <laughs> so if you don't need to hear this message today, I'll just preach it to myself because it's obvious I need it. Come on.
simple things are beautiful, really beautiful. And you know, when you look back at some of the things that have meant the most to you in life, it's not the vacation that you went in debt to go on, that you crammed with so many activities that when you came back, you were grumbling for three weeks about how tired you were from your vacation. <laughs> that you didn't even really enjoy after all, even though you are now in debt trying to pay for it. <laughs> but the things that you remember the most are the simple things. Something one of your grandchildren said to you that just made you laugh, a belly laugh for 10 minutes, or something that, some wonderful thing that one of your children did that just made you feel so special. The simple things are always the things that mean the most to us. And in an effort to entertain ourselves, we usually get into all these complicated methods of trying to do it that end up not doing the job anyway. I personally think life is pretty funny. I'm probably funnier than most of the entertainment you pay for. <laughs> and why? Just because I'm talking about real everyday life. Amen? See, I think it's marvelous that we come to church and God wants us to laugh. I'll tell you one thing, I went to church for a lot of years and there was no laughing where I was going. No laughing at all. And when I started to teach and preach, I mean, I'm not ordinarily a very funny person. And I was amazed that people were laughing. And I can tell you, I know that God wants us to laugh. He wants us to enjoy life, and He wants us to laugh more. He doesn't want us to go through it stressed out, in a blur, all upset, frustrated, thinking we can't make it one more time. And I refuse to live like that anymore. And I kept praying for life to change and for my circumstances to change, and about three years ago, I got it. It ain't going to change, so I better. Come on, is anybody getting this? The second thing I'll tell you that will simplify your life is stay focused on the main thing. There's a couple of main things that every person in here should be giving themselves to. I know what my main thing is. Number one, God. Number two, my husband, my children, my grandchildren. Number three, this ministry that God has so blessed me to be able to be involved in. So in order to stay focused on these things, I have to say no to a lot of other things, and not everybody likes it, but God's happy. And when you learn to keep Him happy instead of everybody else, things are going to change a lot in your life. Stay focused on the main thing. Psalm 27.4 was a life-changing verse of Scripture for me, and I do mean that. We all have certain things in our life that we can say, that was a, that was a moment, a, a, a life-changing moment for me. Let's look at Psalm 27, 4. One thing, and by the word, way, the word simple means one. One thing have I asked of the Lord, and that will I seek after. That will I inquire for and insistently require, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord in His presence all the days of my life, to behold and gaze upon His beauty, the sweet attractiveness and delightful loveliness of the Lord, and to meditate, consider, and inquire in His temple. There's a lot of words there, so I'll just quote it for you. One thing have I desired, and that will I seek after, that I might dwell in Your presence and behold Your beauty all the days of my life. The one thing that God told Martha that she was missing, that Mary had, was putting him first. He said, that's the one thing that's needful. And so I might as well just tell you now, if you have no time for God in your schedule, then you might as well forget ever having any joy or peace. Nothing in your life is going to make any sense. And God won't let it make any sense because He is a jealous God, and He's jealous of all the other things that we think are so important that we have to do that leaves us with no room for Him. 
Stop trying to work God into your schedule and work your schedule around God. Amen? Put Him first. Do it first before you do anything else. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His way of doing and being. And all of these other things will be added unto you. Well, if you feel like that your life is just too complicated, today can be the day that you begin to simplify it. Matthew eleven twenty eight says, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened, and I will cause you to rest. If you'll go to the Lord, He'll begin to show you things that you can change in your life in order to simplify it. Women in Albania are taught to be silent and not to speak out. This is something that has come from long past ago. And although many organizations uh, do advocate and do encourage women to bring it out and to um, tell the truth, it's something that has to do with the culture. If something happens to you, it's a shame factor. For some women, the Christian church is becoming a refuge, a place where they can speak freely. However, less than 2% of the population are Christian, and most of them have no spiritual mothers or fathers. What I'm facing, I cannot share with my parents. They are not Christians. What I'm facing, I cannot, I do not have an adult Christian to talk to and say, is this normal, what is happening to me? Or how can I face this difficulty? Counsel is something that we lack. The first generation has just to experience everything, good or bad. And this spiritual mother for people, it's for, for the ladies and for the women, it's very important because it's somebody saying, I've gone through this way. It's painful, but you're going to make it. And this is what Joyce has been transmitting to us and giving us power to go forward. Even though there are hard times in our life, even though not everything is perfect, but we know that somebody else went through the same road, the same pain, and she made it. So we're going to make it as well. The freedom from bad habits lies in filling your life with one good habit after another. First, we form habits, and eventually they form us. The Bible says that we overcome evil with good. And with God's help, I believe that you can put an end to the struggle and discover a new level of success in your life. Op deze dubbel DVD legt Joyce uit welke goede gewoonten belangrijk zijn en hoe dit je leven zal verbeteren. Goede gewoonten aanleren, slechte gewoonten doorbreken is ook als boek verkrijgbaar. Bestel ze samen en ontvang korting via onze website joyce-meyer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100